The Benson Hotel, a late Edwardian masterpiece that became another sparkling jewel in the collection of Simon Benson's achievements. It's elegant, regal, and tastefully luxurious. Starting off as the dream of a humble lumber baron, the Benson Hotel exists today as a wonder of the early 20th century art and style. Here now is the history of this fascinating marvel. Simon Benson was born October 2nd, 1851 in Norway and immigrated to the United States with his family at the age of 16. He began working in the logging industry in Wisconsin and eventually moving his wife and children to the state of Oregon. He worked his way up through the ranks and started up the Benson Logging and Lumber Company. In 1891, his wife died after a long battle with tuberculosis, leaving the grieving Simon as a single father. He was a man devoted to his children, and he was more driven than ever to make his business a success. His business pioneered the use of logging railroads instead of using oxen like his competitors. And to save on shipping costs, his company employed the use of logging rafts that floated his timber down to his sawmill in San Diego, supplying Southern California with its desperately needed lumber. Between the period of 1905 and 1929, the city of Portland, Oregon, experienced a surge of growth. Becoming much more than just a logging town, it quickly grew into a cultured city complete with annual parades and rose festivals, and new construction introduced modern architecture and design to the city. Being somewhat of a visionary himself, Simon Benson dreamed of a world-class hotel for the city of Portland, and in 1912, he commissioned the city's most prominent architectural firm, Doyle & Patterson, to help bring his dream to a reality. The exterior of the hotel was designed in the French Second Empire style, complete with glazed terracotta and red brick. The lobby had arched windows, and the top of the building was capped with a French mansard roof with dormers. The hotel even had the grandest marquee out front, standing over 50 feet tall and made of glass and steel. The marquee would later collapse under the weight of heavy snow in 1937. The fabulous interiors of the hotel are a true testament to the elegance and grandeur that Simon pursued. He had bought the best Paonazzo marble to line the baseboards of the walls and pillars. The wood paneling above the marble was done in the now extinct Circassian walnut, which was imported from the forests of Imperial Russia. A story goes that Simon Benson, who was quite used to spending large sums of money, had nearly fainted when he received the bill from the Tsar for the rare wood. That exotic paneling still remains the breathtaking focal point of the main lobby. Adorning this grandiose space are the hanging Austrian crystal chandeliers, the grand fireplace with matching Paonazzo marble hearth, and of course, who can miss the classical coffered ceiling with hand-carved plaster molding? The lobby alone set Benson's hotel apart from others in the city. During the construction on the hotel, Simon had been spending a lot of time in the city and noticed that there were few places for the general public to get a drink of water. During an independence parade, he noted the cries from a thirsty child. And one day, he walked into one of the city's various saloons to ask for a glass of water. When told he could only get water if he ordered a drink, he then asked for a glass of beer and a glass of water. He drank only the water and left the beer behind. It occurred to him that the loggers and working class men of the city had no access to drinking water, and it was much easier to quench their thirst with alcohol, which no doubt negatively affected their health and productivity at work. Simon then donated $10,000 towards the installation of 20 bronze drinking fountains around the downtown area, equivalent to around $292,000 in today's money. These beautifully ornate fountains constantly gushed water day and night and have provided Portland citizens with a healthier way to hydrate themselves for over 110 years. The fountains were given the endearing nickname, the Benson Bubblers, and Simon even had one installed right outside his hotel. On March 5, 1913, the hotel opened with the name the New Oregon Hotel, since it was technically annexed as part of the original Oregon Hotel next door. Standing 12 stories tall and containing 200 guest rooms, it was the most lavish hotel in the city, 
featuring modern innovations such as electric lighting and even the hotel closets were equipped with door switches that automatically activated the electric lamp when you opened it. Not to mention, there was circulating ice water, and the guests were greeted each morning with a delivery of hot clam nectar, which is the clam juice left over from boiling clams. Yes, that was once a desirable beverage. The clam nectar tradition eventually switched to a morning delivery of hot coffee. Despite the hotel's luxurious and ornate style and atmosphere, it hemorrhaged money in its first 16 months. Simon Benson was not about to let his name be tarnished. He took over management of the hotel, naming it after himself in order to distance its poor reputation from his management. He cut costs where necessary and turned the hotel into a profitable business, eventually selling it to William Boyd and Robert Keller. The hotel has enjoyed success ever since, being sold off occasionally to new owners. Most recently, it was purchased by Hilton and now runs under their management. In the midst of booming growth in the city of Portland, Simon Benson dreamed of delivering the city a jewel they could take pride in. While the Benson Hotel was only affordable to the wealthy, it did provide the city and its people with a much needed status symbol that planted them firmly on the nation's maps. In his desire to better the lives of his fellow citizens, he provided them free of charge the world's most precious commodity, drinking water. Simon eventually retired from his logging company in his older years, continuing his philanthropy. He funded the construction of the Benson Polytechnic High School to help young working class children achieve a better future outside of the dangerous sweatshops their peers were destined for. He also established essential vehicle thoroughfares throughout the state of Oregon in order to encourage tourism. The Columbia River Highway owes much of its existence to him. He also purchased 1,000 acres around Multnomah and Wakina Falls, which he donated to the city of Portland. The Benson wasn't his only achievement in hospitality. In 1927, he built the Columbia Gorge Hotel, which was built in a classic mission style. Despite his immense wealth, he never lost sight of his humanity or sense of giving. Simon Benson died on August 5, 1942, at the age of 90, having lived a fulfilling life and leaving behind a legacy that will not be soon forgotten. In 1986, the Benson Hotel was added to the National Register of Historic Places. It remains in operation today, a beautiful and shining example of the restrained architectural styles and extravagance of the late Edwardian age. A testament to one man's well-deserved achievement of the American dream. Thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and comment below. For more stories on the architecture, engineering, and history of the Steam Age, make sure to subscribe. You can support me by either becoming a Patreon member or channel member, or you can help donate to my transatlantic voyage to the UK. Links and information are in the description below. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.